Something is happening right now in Memphis, Tennessee that almost nobody's talking about, but everybody needs to be talking about it. A massive AI facility built by none other than Elon Musk uh, was built at lightning speed. And from the moment that it was switched on, families miles away started feeling sick in their lungs. They could sense something in the air and in the atmosphere. Y'all, this ain't conspiracy. This ain't hype. This is physical, the physical cost of a digital arms race. You know, when artificial intelligence needs more power than the grid can handle, somebody's got to pay the price. And it's rarely the people that's building it. Stay with me. I want to break it down. It's going to be a quick show, but I'm going to show you what is unfolding in Memphis is a warning for the rest of the country and a preview of the world that we're all walking into. You're watching the big picture. Uh, something is unfolding in Memphis that the rest of the country needs to pay close attention to. Not because it's local news and not because it's political tied to, you know, Elon Musk became a very political figure in recent years, but because it's a snapshot of where the entire AI race is heading. And the people living there in Memphis, you know, the regular hardworking families, they're feeling the impact long before the rest of America even realizes what is coming. Let's look at a little clip here. In Memphis, Elon Musk is making a play to control the future of artificial intelligence. His company, XAI, says it has built the biggest supercomputer in the world with lightning speed. Paul Young is the city's mayor. It represents a tremendous opportunity, an opportunity for us uh, to take our economy to the next level. XAI says it will create $100 million in revenue and hundreds of jobs. But the digital future needs power, lots of it. These are the gas turbines fueling the supercomputer they call Colossus. They emit hazardous pollutants like formaldehyde and nitrogen oxides, according to the manufacturer. Just over this fence, you can see and hear the turbines churning 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Without them, the data center does not function. What's not in dispute is the fact that they are polluting the air. What people don't know is how much of that pollution is reaching nearby communities. So this is the world uh, that we're living in now. This massive AI installation, you know, it was promoted to be an economic win, and I'm sure that it is for some people. Uh, futuristic Leap, uh, XAI, the part of Musk's company that is overseeing and is over the AI department, Grok is what we know it as, um, is considered to be the mo one of the most powerful, if not, depending on who you read the most powerful AI um, system out there. But the moment this project came online, the topic of this video is the atmosphere around it changed. Individuals started noticing odors drifting through their neighborhoods. This video goes on to talk about irritation in their lungs, a heaviness in the air that wasn't there before. Now, they know their, their environment. And they know that something has entered into it. Many of them have said they've lived there for decades, was raised as a child there, never smelled anything like that, never heard the constant hum. This facility, XAI, is a microcosm of what is happening all over the United States of America and, quite frankly, all over the world. It runs on enormous amounts of energy. We've said on the big picture multiple times that even the godfathers of AI have said there's only one thing that can stop the progression of AI from artificial general intelligence to artificial super intelligence, and quite frankly, as we've covered here, to the Terminator movie, is the lack of power, the lack of energy. It's all about energy. You know, in this one, this one hub here in Memphis is going to require enough energy probably to run a small city by itself. You know, this... It's going to require enough to, that would that would t at least entire districts of an area. Uh, when the local grid cannot support this level of demand, then the operators did exactly what they we just saw in the video clip. They installed their own power source. Okay, and and it's just almost laughable to me that this flies right in the face of what we've been sold for the last two or three decades about climate change and that we need to get away from fossil fuels and all this. We get we get away from. Uh, putting uh, emissions into the air, but yet these powerful billionaires that many of them promote, we got to save the climate, are the ones that are requiring more energy than ever. And they know that wind and solar will not be able to do it. So they bring in massive turbine engines running around the clock, 24 hours, seven days a week, 
pushing out the force needed for this to keep this supercomputer alive. Now, the turbines that are located at XAI release the emissions. Uh, it's not speculation. It's fact. Uh, it's not really a matter of if, but how much someone's breathing it. Because, you know, you can't put something in there and somebody's not breathing it because we're all breathing the same air. These neighborhoods downwind, you know, like I said, they carry decades of environmental stress already, high respiratory issues, shorter life expectancy, long-term health struggles. And now a new industrial giant is running full speed right into them. You know, families are beginning to speak up in the Memphis area. If you live in the Memphis area, hit it in the uh, live chat or the comment section and let us know if you're experiencing this, if you know anybody that is experiencing that. But something is changing quickly in, in the world that we live in. Um, and I believe that it's accelerating quickly. The frustration comes with this in that acceleration that people living closest to these types of facilities and in the regions, they begin to feel, the, honestly, they were not a part of the decision. I mean, we've got some things going on here in Birmingham uh, when it comes to data centers that are being built and people say, we don't want it, we don't want it. But this project was planned in Memphis, approved, built, energized, and celebrated long before they ever had a chance to even ask questions. That's how, because they don't have, in their mind, they don't have time to sit down and break down every little iota to the citizens of the communities where these data centers are coming in. And now the people of Memphis in the surrounding area, they're suffering the consequences. Um, so there was a public meeting. There were several public meetings that have, have been held there in that area and allowed a few people to say a few things, but it was all for show. While all this is happening on the ground, something even larger is happening on the national level. And I'm going to make a subsequent video after this, if you're watching this live. But later tonight, I'm going to release a detailed breakdown of something that we broke on this program. We didn't break it, but we were one of the first ones to start talking about it. It became the biggest video that we've ever had when we had L.A. Marzulli on here with Sandy and I on our Monday night show talking about on November 24th, there was an executive order written by none other than Donald Trump, and he, and he named this de de executive order Mission Genesis. And, uh, y'all, that just has so many prophetic timetables uh, tied to it, and it's all about AI. So I'm going to be doing a series of shows over the next several days just letting you, uh, just showing you proof of what I've been telling you is coming, and that is a rapid acceleration of this move towards uh, complete control by a digital system. This is a full-scale federal push, this mission genesis, to merge decades of scientific archives, medical data, energy information, national security material into one advanced AI program platform, meaning that this plant, this data center uh, in Memphis, owned by XAI, XAI uh, Elon Musk company, and then, of course, ChatGPT, OpenAI, We've got Anthropic, many others. The goal is simple. The government wants to accelerate a culmination, a convergence. You know, I say that word a lot. To accelerate innovation at a level that rivals the Manhattan Project. But you and I both know when you start feeding that much information into AI, the physical machines powering these machines, the need for the energy that they have is staggering. They need cooling systems that move Millions of gallons of water, they need reinforced facilities, hardened infrastructure, and endless power. And Memphis, Tennessee, is giving us a preview of that world. See, when the grid can't handle the load, turbines appear. And when turbines are not enough, more gets added. And when communities raise concerns, they're told it would, it'll be dealt with later. When the project expands, those that live closest find out last. Now. A second, even larger installation is already being built in Memphis with a bigger footprint, more cooling towers, more power needs, more environmental load. The same residents are bracing for what's coming. Now, let me just speak to you for just a minute, real quick, before I jump off here. But like I said, be looking for a couple of videos today and be looking for a video tonight uh, that's going to break down in depth what Mission Genesis is. Uh, but this is an acceleration, the kind that Scripture warned about, warned us about. You know I'm going to take it back to the Bible. The book of Daniel said that knowledge would increase to such a place to where 
what he saw that God told him to seal up the scroll and, and it is to not be opened. What you saw in this scroll is not to be opened until the days that knowledge shall increase and men shall run to and fro. Well, that's, that's the world we live in. Um, it's, an, it's a time of acceleration. AI is just something floating in the cloud. It isn't just software. Y'all, AI is more than something that's digital. It is also physical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's physical and it's supernatural and it's digital. It sits behind fences, next to neighborhoods, running on engines, consuming water, releasing heat, drawing more energy than most cities do. But here's the thing. There's a goal. This is all the infrastructure of it. But when AI grows, when it expands, I'm telling you, it's moving toward a beast, towards what we call the beast system that the Bible talks about. There's no doubt about it. So when you get to that place and you start thinking about the bigger picture, and you start asking, where is all this heading? We understand it is the infrastructure. It is the foundation of the world of the Antichrist. It's the physical footprint right in front of us all. We are watching it. We are seeing it. We feel the pressure. We that are awake know that this technological race isn't a temporary surge. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the new normal. And as a watchman on the wall, which I feel like God has called me to do that, you're, many of you, you have called me your pastor, whatever you want to call me. Call me whatever you want to do. Just call me for dinner. <laughs> no, seriously. I want to be a watchman on the wall, and I want to tell it to you plainly. What you're seeing in Memphis, that's why I just jumped on here to make this quick video, it's the early stage of a system that will intensify. Listen to me. In 26, it will accelerate tremendously in 2026 and beyond. Scripture already told us that it would look like the days of Noah, and I believe that those days are not coming. Those days are already here. And as I said earlier, da Daniel said those days would be a day where knowledge would explode on a level that we can't even comprehend. Well, we're here. That we're there. Jesus warned of in in uh, in the Word of God in Hebrews chapter 12 that everything would have a global shaking. We believe that. Paul described it as perilous times, but every promise comes, every prophecy comes with a promise. Psalm 24 still declares that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. No supercomputer, no turbine field, no AI system exists outside his authority. Okay, this didn't catch him by surprise. Isaiah said, when darkness covers the earth, his glory rises on his people. And that, when the, en that the enemy cannot stop that. The darker the hour, the brighter the remnant. So yes, we stay alert. Yes, we stay informed, but we don't bow to fear. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, not the voice of panic, not the voice of confusion, his voice. The world is building systems of control, but the kingdom is building people of discernment, people just like you. The world is running on power. The kingdom runs on presence. Woo! The world is chasing more knowledge. The kingdom gives supernatural wisdom, and that's what you need. Whatever comes next, remember this. God placed you in this moment on purpose. The throne isn't shaking. The church isn't shrinking. Maybe shrinking in numbers, but not shrinking in power and authority. The kingdom is not reacting to this hour. The kingdom is being revealed in it. We didn't come to fit in. We didn't come to play games. We didn't come to this moment for anything other than to lead in this moment. Stay awake, y'all. Keep your eyes open. Keep your head on a swivel. And know that we're about to go into some crazy times. And more than anything, remember this. We ain't woke, but we certainly are awake. Look for more shows today and for the breakdown of Mission Genesis. See you next time. God bless. Help us build the big picture family. We're on a mission to wake up the world to what is really going on. Go to LarryRaglin.com to give a one-time gift or become a monthly partner. Any amount blesses the entire big picture family. While you're there, pick up our book, I See Greatness in You. Browse our merchandise store, connect on social media, and get on the big picture mailing list at LarryRaglin.com. Join us and be a part of the big picture family where we ain't woke, but we are certainly awake.
watching The Big Picture.